Did you finish Sabaori? I'm in. I'm inside the prison. Imperdona. Yeah, which is sick because you know you learn a little bit more about like Ace's relationship with Garp, funniest fucking named anime character of all time. Garp, Monkey D. Garp, and obviously Ace is my favorite character after Zoro, and it's pretty good except for the fact that my least favorite character is has a recurring role in it. Unfortunately, just absolutely despise him you guys know buggy just the fucking worst even though he got a revamp in this okay buggy now has like cool hair so that's chill i guess in this iteration so he's fine i still don't like him with, with the ponytail he looks a little bit cooler but i still don't like him the amazon lily island arc was fire uh that's where oda really tested out his uh penmanship uh with respect to like uh drawing women writing about women and just straight up doing the most disgusting levels of fan service I've ever seen. Like the sequence where Luffy is like, you know, inside of the, uh, when, when he falls into the, uh, when well, not falls in when he's found and then they like take the mushrooms off of his body and think he's a woman. So like, then they're like, Oh, his penis. They think his penis is a mushroom. And then they, and then they wash him. It's like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's the most diversity I've seen as far as like the, the body types of women on the show, but then they stretch his, like, it's just crazy. Okay. Ace visibility for, for everybody. I mean, Luffy is definitely ace, aromantic ace, that type shit. I don't know what the f that's uh, about, but like, it's very clear. He just cares about adventure. Like he doesn't give a f about sexy ladies. Like he just does not care because at a certain point, like, I thought, what's the woman? I mean, the giant woman was really hot. Fuck. Uh, but the other one that, like, he has, he's, like, vibing with a little bit. Not Boa. Not Boa. No, no, no. Boa is great. But, like, everyone likes Boa. Everyone thinks Boa is hot. That's not, that's not the real one. Marguerite is the real one. The blonde. Yeah. I'm not a shipper, but Luffy and Boa would be a great ending. No, Marguerite is the one that is, like, actually kind of, you know... She was the one I was shipping Luffy with, okay? I'm an adult. What am I talking about? It's kind of crazy. Anyway, um, the but the but the tall uh the tall giant test is is fire too, Afalandra. Anyway, so all that stuff is fine. Lots of fucking uh lots of fan service in that episode, in that sequence of episodes. Once again, uh Oda defeating the misogynist allegations, however, by uh, putting Nico Robin in the best personal arc. Uh, Nico Robin on the bridge is crazy. I need more of that. I haven't seen enough of that yet. But like, I, I want to see so much more of that because, um, you know, she's she's fire. And that arc is fire. There's like an entire nation that's like designed around like building this insane bridge. Like, that's sick. That's super cool. Tequila Wolf. Yeah. Really, really, really good side story. Were you devastated by Sabaody's end? No, because I just immediately clocked Kuma as like, uh, you know, doing something that's like relatively positive for them. I heard One Piece gets good around episode 400. That is, that sounds like a meme, but it literally is true. It does. It really does. Like once Skypea is over, it's like really fucking good. It, it just kind of like kicks it into high gear. And then every single arc basically uh, levels up, except for uh, the annoying... Uh, thriller bar arc, which I just despise. I really did not like that. It felt like filler. Like, literally, it felt like filler. I mean, it moved the story forward, so I understand why it exists, but it, it was just my least favorite. Oh, spooky. It's a shit arc. Uh, Gecko Moira is the worst villain. But yeah, Water 7 onwards is like absolutely been insane. Like super watchable, super cool, except for Thriller Bark. If you look closely, the show's art style is different for Nico's arc on the bridge. I mean, the show's art style changes a lot too. It gets good at episode 50. That's when Arlong Park is. Yeah, at first, uh, yeah, 100%. Let's keep it real. It's fucking shit. Like the first arcs in comparison to where I'm at now, when I look back at it, I'm like, oh, it's so bad. Arlong Park was like the first good and interesting episode. Like the Miaraban arc is, is not good. Anyway, listen, listen, listen. Uh, all that stuff is great. There's a little bit of a transphobia, I think, which I thought was strange because Oda up until this moment has been like very oddly like over the top positive about like non-binary representation 
But I don't know. I'll, I'm I'm waiting. I don't think like it'll be like that. But no, the Sanji one, like the Sanji Island, makes it seem like you know. I, I can't tell if they're drag queens or if they're trans or not. But like all the fucking animals on the island are also women too. Like it's like trans island, but they make it seem like they're creepy perverts. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but that all, also that arc is like 15 years old. Yeah, probably. But remember, Alabasta also features like literally a non-binary character. The the guy uh, who or the person, I guess, like that was that was like a very yeah, Bong Clay, right? Is it Bong Clay? Like that's like a straight up fucking gender non-conforming character, which is odd to see in an anime like that out of fucking nowhere. There's good queer inclusion later on, too. There's also a tra trans character in the Rhino arc. I think a ninja or samurai or both. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, I'll see. I, I always I always let Oda cook. I always let him cook because uh, who knows? Who knows what happens? The whole point of Kamakaba Kingdom is to be open about who you are on the inside. Oh, okay. That's I, that's what I would. That's my suspicion as well. For the record, I mean, no spoilers, but that's that's kind of what I thought too. I was like, maybe they're gonna make it seem like it's creepy at first. But it's like a misdirection. And it's just about like, uh, you know, being like maybe it, it'll be like, a I understand uh, how these people live kind of thing. You know what I mean? Anyway, we'll just see it. But tra Sanji could be transphobic. You know, certain characters could be transphobic. That is allowed. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, we're talking about anime. Okay. Like transphobia is the most normal component when uh, in like lovable characters. If he is a transphobic person. Remember, one of the most beloved animes of all time, Hunter x Hunter, quite literally features one of the best villains of all time, who is a literal So, like, unironically, openly a file. So, there is that. Zora is racist as f dog. I like your head cannoning, Hassan. Can't believe you just said transphobia is good. No, I said transphobia is a normal component of existence, and one character uh, is allowed to be transphobic if that's just, like, potentially a learning lesson or something, especially if a character has, like, questionable morals in general. Hisoka is attracted to the power. He wants to power for anything, including them kids. No, no, no. He, he is definitely just... He is for children. Let's be real. Come on, man. Hisoka is a file and honestly he should not have been like drawn as as like kind of a morally questionable morally gray and and kind of cool person because he is literally a fucking file